So I think we're going to finish up uh, working events. I think this will be the last one, part five. And it's not going to be super long. I think just watching the other ones, I notice I always wear the same clothes. I think i got to wear them in order, too. <laughs> but um, I think a lot was covered in the first four. You know, like I said, the the better you're prepared you know, to work these events. You know, if it's just a day event, you know, plan on being on your feet, plan on moving around a lot. Like if it's at a, you know, an arena or a stadium or or a baseball field or a golf course, you're going to be on your feet a lot. You know, if it's a, an event that's, you know, multiple days where you're going to be there, you know, that's basically what this was equipped to. I guess I should have done one on each, you know, one for the single events. But, you know, I, I think good information can be taken out of it. Um, you know, not to harp on it, but like I said, the best prepared you are, you know, the better uh, you're going to be able to do your job and, and regardless what happens. You know, you got to remember they have uh, supervisors where their whole purpose is to take care of their line people. I mean, so there, there is people that's going to be coming around every half hour, every hour, you know, giving you food, keeping you updated. Um, you know, if you have any concerns, you address it with them. If they can't answer it, they'll go up the ladder and then and, and go that way. And again, I don't know why my phone is doing that. But, um, you know, you just got to remember the bigger the event, you know, it's, as I said in one of the other ones, you know, if you have 50 people or 60 people and they're spread out or 100 people, you know, it's going to take a little bit, you know, to hit everyone. So, you know, just be patient of that. You know, if it's an emergency, obviously, there's, there's, you should have their phone number or somebody you should call or be able to call. Um, you know, one thing I didn't cover is food. You know, if, if you, you know, get, you know, if you have a, a funny stomach that, you know, too much cheese or, uh, too much, you know, or other dairy products, you know, I mean, milkshake at one of these events, no matter how great it looks, you know, may not be the way to go, you know, nacho cheese or anything cheesy uh, or anything that, you know, you're, that you know your stomach better than anyone, you know, because like I said, you're going to be dealing with porta potties, you know, 98% of the time. And then the, the bigger events that have the, the water trailers, you know, I mean, after day one, you know, they're not really great anyway, even though, you know, over the last couple of years, I think festivals across the border have gone great lengths uh, to make sure that they're, they're, you know, their porta potties or their, you know, their water trailers, whatever they call them, are, are serviced quite regularly. But again, you know, those trucks moving around event areas, sometimes it's just not feasible. Um, you know, we had one where, the porta potties down these hill down a hill and it was like a, a gold section so it was like a vip section couldn't get service because it rained for three days and the trucks couldn't get down there so of course all those porta potties they just uh were awful and they tried to, to move some other ones open but you know when you have a few hundred people in one area and everyone's using it you know you don't want to be in there sick and you don't want i mean nothing Worse than being in a, you know, porta potty, you know, with that type of stomach problem, and, and people keep knocking on the door, you know, it's not a a great situation to anybody at any time. So, you know, be careful with what you eat. Um, you know, the the biggest advice is, you know, I always make sure is, you know, make sure you're hydrated, make sure you're ready, make sure you have plenty of socks. I can't stress enough that socks. You know, I mean, it's there's always a use for socks. You know, if you have 20 socks, bring 10 more pair. Um, because you'll run in, and you do these enough, you'll run into an event where you use that many socks or you use a, a, a damn lot of them. Um, you know, I think on three occasions out of, you know, 20-something years, I think three occasions I ran through my clothes. You know what I mean? And I, I double, I triple pack. You know what I mean? That's so why. <coughs> for me to say I ran, you know, through my clothes, it's it happens because you never know what situation you're going to be in. 
you know, uh, sh you know, especially shoes. Uh, they don't dry overnight, you know, especially in campgrounds or hotels or, or wherever you are. They, they don't. So bring, you know, you know, if you got your car there and you got six pair of shoes and two pair of boots, bring them all. Uh, the more options you have, the better off you are, you know. Uh, same thing with pants, you know. Um, you know, one, two, three, you know what I mean? Three or four pants, you know, for a three-day festival is probably the minimum, you know, that I run. You know, sometimes I'll bring five or six. Because um, you, don't, you don't know what's going to happen. You know, if you're in a cart or if you're in an area where it gets muddy or, you know, something happens and you got to get on the ground or if you're on the ground with somebody, you know what I mean? You just, you just don't know, you know. I got peed on one year. Uh, we had a lady that was just, um, she took something and, uh, you know, she was in an area um, that the cars couldn't get to. And this is the one where we had security and then police would pop in certain times, you know what I mean? They would be in the area, but they wouldn't necessarily be on site. So she was uh, jumping in people's fires, you know, their campgrounds. And and I just got this luck, you know, that I just I just run into it, you know. Uh, I guess you can call me a, you know, black cloud, black cloud officer. You know, that's, that's the people that no matter when they're working, they're always going to run into something. Um, but sure enough, you know, we, we got these calls from our dispatch that, you know, almost like five or six at once that she was going back there going crazy and um, <laughs> literally jumping into people's fires and in their cars and their tents. And, and they're just, uh, there was just no communicating with her. You know I mean, there was just, there was, wasn't. You know, so really all we could do is, you know, I picked her up, threw her over my lap, started driving the car, you know, to the back or to the front, the gate where the police were and the ambulance. And, um, you know, she pissed all over me or whizzed all over me. It wasn't great. You know, it was, uh, it was a horrible feeling. Uh, you know, thank God I, I was able to take a shower because this is one of those areas that, you know, unless you have a, uh, it's one of those places, unless you have a, uh, an RV or you're staying in one of the local hotels, I mean, they have a hose that you can get yourself to, but there's not uh, a shower per se. So, um, I was able to use one of the houses and, and take a shower and, and, you know, thank God for that. So you just never know. You just never know what you're going to run into. And I think um, the next one after this, you know, maybe I'll get some stories. I won't tell the locations, you know what I mean? But I'll, uh, there's tons of them, uh, even with Adam. Um, even Brian has, you know, so there's some Brian stories. Uh, even Jen, you know, uh, she worked a lot of the events in the beginning um, you know, she was usually working the gate, you know, during the daytime, but, uh, she, she used to work a ton for us. And not only that, I mean, she, if we needed gas, cause we were running generators and, you know, golf carts, even though they're, they're great on gas. I mean, it, we would run because a lot of our contracts were, you know, at a certain time, you know, cart one had to run from, you know, from 9 AM to, you know, midnight you know, period. They had to run the entire time as a patrol. And, you know, then the other one would come on, you know, noon, uh, the 2 a.m., you know, kind of thing. So w those carts ran, you know, 24 hours and, you know, 72 hours that week, you know, solid, you know, you could say. Um, so she, she used to do a lot for us or, or go get us groceries and that kind of stuff. And, um, she says she don't like them, but I think she liked them. I mean, and there, and there were some festivals that were horrible, like far as like weather or, uh, you know, thunderstorms. We had one year that was just, they had these straight winds, and it was like a like a damn tornado or a train came through and, and just cut a um, a swath of, you know, you know 20 acres or, or 20 blocks in one direction or the other. And luckily, it didn't hit the ranch we were on, but it hit just north of us. 
you know, so when we were driving in, um, we were driving down this road and there was cows everywhere. <laughs> I was driving, I mean, literally, like, what the hell happened? I just drove into a cow pen. That's not what happened, though. You know, the fences got tore up and there was cows everywhere. So, uh, you know, and then you then there's, you know, the days that it's just so hot. You know what I mean? And, and we uh, brought, uh, we rented a... Um, it was a, like a pull-behind trailer, not a fifth wheel, but it was kind of smaller, and it had air conditioning uh, and stuff like that, so, you know, we just ran the generator, so we, we went through gas a lot, and, uh, you know, when we were doing uh, the, the bigger festivals out there, we even brought, like, a maintenance guy, you know, to help out with setup, because we were, it would take a full day, you know, just to set up, you know, uh, where people were sleeping or where they were staying, and um, and that kind of stuff. So maybe I'll talk about that. But events are great. Uh, you're going to love them as long as you give yourself an opportunity to love them and giving yourself the tools to to be, um, to do a good job, you know, and to be useful, so to speak. And uh, like I said, most of these companies are, are okay. You know, some of the nationals that are uh, just jumped into it from traditional security um, you know, some of the names, uh, you know, bother me, but, you know, my name bothers a lot of people too, so you can't hold that, you know, really against anyone. And that's, that's the way this business is. You really shouldn't, you can hate people, you know, but you really shouldn't hold a grudge because sometimes, you know, you may not be the best person for a particular job and you have to be you know, smart enough to how you keep clients or how you retain clients is, is giving them the best option. And, you know, the biggest thing is, is swallowing the ego and quit, you know, the backstab and stuff. So anyway, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, you know, if anyone has any questions, obviously I love to talk. So, um, like I said, I think the next one we'll maybe do, and then there was something I wanted to show you. It was like a big thing. Uh, I didn't get, exactly what I wanted, but then I was going to do it anyway, but then I couldn't figure out how to slice it in the middle, you know, so to speak, because it was something that I wanted you guys to watch too, or the five or six people that watch this watch, because it was pretty cool. But anyway, we'll talk to you later.